Hey YouTube, I'm Sanj. Welcome back to my channel, Sanj Designs, where I'm building a six car smart garage. Um, I've got Jack from Mills Roofing and Building, and what they're gonna be doing is showing us how we're gonna be installing the slate roof. All the key components go together to building a fantastic watertight, super strong roof that you can hopefully do or get somebody to do on your behalf. Stay tuned, see how it's done. Okay, so welcome back to the build. So just a quick update, Gary, the builder, who you met on some of the previous videos, is no longer on the job. Um, we've parted company, which is my decision. Um, so I've got my own team coming on board. I project managed the whole lot, the rest of the build. So it shows that it can be done if you get the right people on board. But I've got Jack, as I mentioned, from Mills Roofing and Building, and he's gonna show you how we're gonna be installing the roof properly. Now, before I get started, one thing I did want to show you was the sockets and fascias. Um, but unfortunately, for logistical reasons, we didn't have time to do a video on that. But I'll quickly show you the way that Luke did it and the team. So what they've done is put a piece of uh, 2B1 batten across the frame, as you can see there. They then put the soffit underneath, and this is quite a large soffit. It's vented, 400 mil black ash. And then they've installed the fascia across there and they've lined it all up using a string line made it all solid and what i've used is actually 18 mil fascia not the 9 mil which is much stronger much better particularly if you can put heavy duty guttering on there so if you can get the 18 mil or the 20 mil go for that rather than the thin 9 mil because longevity is what you want and quality is what you want don't worry about this this comes on this is just like a protective layer um, just to make sure that basically it doesn't get scratched while they're doing the build. All right, so welcome back. So I've got Jack here from Mills Roofing and Building. And Jack's briefly going to explain what he's doing uh, and how we go about doing the job correctly. So where do you start then, Jack? All right, Ali. Uh, sorry, Sandy. You start with your eave support trays. Yep. And what that allows is it stops your felt dipping in behind the face and allows the water to run off into your gutter nicely. Yep. And then you put on your layer of felt. And why are we using this Tyvek one? The reason we use this, for our own peace of mind, it's the best on the market. Okay, good it's stuff. thicker, it lasts, it's a lot longer, it gets a 15 year warranty with it from manufacturer. It really is just the best stuff you can get for a roof like this. Excellent. And then what comes after that then is the... After that you batten with 2B1 batten. Yeah. And that's tantalised. Tantalised yep. and treated, hence the colour, rather than being plain timber. Yeah. And normally you go at a 275 mil gauge. Yeah. But we do it at a 200 just because we like to have a little bit more head lap. Okay, brilliant. For our own peace of mind, really. So you overlap it all the way across. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the valleys in a minute. So Jack, you're doing the valleys now. So yeah. what's the important part of this valley process? All we've got to do, make sure you get the prep right in the first place. Because if you don't get it in the right positions to flow to your eave, then it's just going to all travel behind and you're going to have stagnant water build up and all sorts of problems really. Okay, so using weatherproof board. Yeah, yeah. WPB, yeah. And then that's covered with Tyvek again? Tyvek again to tie it all into the roof. Then you batten to the outsides. And then you cover it with your lead valley. Excellent. And we can see that on the time lapse. Yeah. Brilliant. So that is the felt and battening done. You can see what a great job they've done. Look how neat and tidy that is. So that's making sure everything is in the right center on the right gauge for the particular types of slates you're using. And you can see all of the valleys have been done and they've double felted that just to make sure because that's obviously going to have a high water flow. And now we're going to talk about how we start the tiling process. So Jack, what's the most important thing when you're actually starting a job like this when you're laying the tiles the most important thing is make sure you've got your fountain button correct from the start 
Otherwise, your slates are never going to lay correctly. Yeah. Then what you do, you start with an eave at the bottom. You come over this end. And that lays onto your double eave button at the bottom. And that gives you two and a half inches out from your fascia. Yeah. And that lays perfectly into the centre of your gutter line. Mm -hmm. Then your bottom one, from then on, you just hit the centre of your button and it should work perfectly all the way up as long as you've battened it correctly. And you're using copper nails across Co the whole lot? copper nails. So they don't... So they don't just rot away in the future. They yeah. last a lot longer, the best you can get again. And they don't react with a slate either? No, you don't ever do a slate roof without copper. Excellent. So obviously we've got the lead flashing here. So what's the thing to remember when you're doing your lead flashing? These are the lead soakers. These are the most important part because they're what catch the water at the end and make sure it tracks back down to your gutter. Your first one on this particular roof because of the batting gauge is 12 inches. That brings it right down near the bottom. And then from then on, it's 10 inches. So it sits top of batten to bottom of the next batten down. And that gives you a completely watertight seal all the way up. Excellent. And that's all going to be rendered over and, and the painted. And the rendered will sit right down near the slates and rendered right up to the bottom of the soffit once that's on. Excellent. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle for the roof, to have a real good quality roof, are the ridge tiles. So the first thing you've got to have is something called a dry ridge kit. And what this does is goes on the corners and it allows the roof to actually breathe and to ventilate. Because you need airflow. If you don't have airflow actually in your roof, then you start to get damp and mold. So what this does, it gives a level of waterproofing, but it's also breathable. So it means actually your roof can actually sort of have well ventilation. So you put that down first on the corners and then I've got these called interlocking ridge tiles. Now back in the days, these were just being mortared in. But nowadays with building regulations, to stop them sort of flying off or breaking off. These are actually fixed and you can see a hole here. What you do, you screw them in like that and then they actually interlock and that gives you a nice neat finish across the whole of the roof, which you'll see now. So that is the roof now complete. That is an A1 finish, slate roof. The tiles, the guttering, the ridge, the end caps, the valleys, everything done to the highest standard that we wanted. And big thanks to Jack and the team at Mills Roofing and Building. Really pleased with the job and you can see the finish. And uh, that's how we do it, guys. Right, so here, guys, that's another great job off the list. Uh, and you can see the fantastic quality. Uh, but let us know what you think. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. But once again, a big thank you to Jack, Billy, and the team at Mills Roofing and Building for doing a fantastic job. Really pleased with it. So, guys, stay tuned. Check out some other videos that are coming up. And we'll see you next time.